Just who can use the Opticon and under what conditions its use will be most effective is now the subject of an intensive field evaluation program in the United States and abroad. One such program is now underway at the site center of the Cleveland Society for the Blind in Cleveland, Ohio. Well, Here, a group of blind people representing a broad spectrum of backgrounds and interests are becoming acquainted with the Opticon. A teacher, a business executive, a student, a reporter, and a computer programmer are attempting to determine if the Opticon can be of assistance in their information gathering process. Yeah, there's some sentences right below. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. So you find the first sentence. Is it the descender? Is it the descender there? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Right, exactly. How about that? This is a capital. Good. Good. Uh, isn't it? One unique facet of this particular field program is that in one teacher-student combination, the blind is instructing the blind. Since the Opticon is designed so that one unit may be slaved to another unit, a blind person who is proficient on the Opticon may aid in instructing someone else. Lauren Schoff, a recent Stanford graduate student, has also served as a research subject for the Opticon program. He has a keen understanding of the appropriate role for the Opticon in his daily routine. The Opticon's most valuable use, I don't really think there's any one area. Uh, as a student, I would say it, it's been most valuable, of course, in handling textbooks and in homework. Uh, Professors have a habit of drowning you with a what might be termed a paper blizzard of ditto sheets, mimeograph material, so on. And this is very difficult to arrange for in other ways, except you know, maybe someone in the class will read it to you. With the Opticon, I don't worry about that. The advantages when you're seeking a job are in when you come to an employer, you can say, you know, uh, I can just fit in. I, I can do whatever you want me to. You don't have to make special adaptations for me. The further adaptability of the Opticon is demonstrated by another unique aspect of the Cleveland Field experience. This man is an expert systems analyst. He is both deaf and blind. With the aid of the Opticon, he is learning for the first time to recognize the symbols his computer prints out. Back at Stanford University, doctors Bliss and Benville analyze the progress of the Opticon field trials. They have been able to reach some significant conclusions about their work so far. Uh, the Opticon, I think, is important primarily because it increases the independence of the people who are able to use it. Uh, a person, for the first time, is able to read his own mail directly, and he's able to look at books without having an intermediate translator. Uh, that increase in independence, I think, is really the most important thing about the Opticon. Of the people we've seen, I believe that Anyone that uses Braille in a meaningful way can learn to use the Opticon. That's, that's been our experience, and I, I think that uh, that's generally true. The skills required for the people to use the Opticon, I believe, are, are, can, are basically three. First of all, they need a tactile sensitivity and ability to perceive tactile patterns. Secondly, they need some 
degree of muscular coordination because they have to make pretty fine movements with the camera. And thirdly, they need a lot of incentive and persistence to be able to stick with a task that's difficult to develop the skills. A person can get to the point that he's relatively independent of instruction in perhaps 50 hours, but it may take him several months of practice to develop enough speed and fluency with the task that it's a useful tool in his life. Uh, people use it in different ways. Some people, some people use it for pleasure reading. Others uh, use it primarily for reading notices and that sort of, uh, sort of thing. But it has is, it is significantly changed uh, the lifestyle of people who have used it enough to become proficient with it. In the modest assembly plant in Palo Alto, California, the production models of the Opticon begin to take form, circuit connected to circuit by wires almost invisible to the naked eye. The deft hands of specialists assemble the final product, the product of one man's dream and the combined efforts of many. But for John Linville and Jim Bliss, the job doesn't end here. There's the Opticon of tomorrow to be considered. I think the future of the Opticon depends a lot upon the response that we get from the <coughs> agencies that deal with the blind and uh, the blind people themselves. And so, uh, in some sense, the future uh, is, is a bit unknown at the moment, but I, I'm uh, very enthusiastic about the possibilities. See, we believe, uh, I, I think, pretty clearly that, uh, that it is the agencies for the blind who are primarily uh, by Opticons for the blind, and we believe that there are two primary agencies that do this. One, those who are involved with the education of the young blind, and second, those who are concerned with the rehabilitation of the, of the, of the people who are blinded. Uh, because uh, the, the first has to do with the learning process, and the second has to do with, with, uh, with saleable skills, which can be developed by a person in conjunction with an Opticon. As we're looking for at various possibilities to use the basic optical to tactile conversion uh, technique or, or that the Opticon provides, the capability that it provides, in other ways than simply uh, reading, uh, these will be in terms of accessories to use with the Opticon. And at the same time, we're uh, undertaking some more basic studies to try to make device that, a device that ultimately will provide the better performance, uh, the possibility of reading at a faster rate, and a device that would be easier to learn. Uh, we believe, I think, that the present one, ap one letter aperture Opticon is, is a useful adjunct to, to braille and to magnetic tapes, to the ordinary materials of the blind. But we also believe that uh, with development, we can make a more able device with which the blind can read, read faster. Uh, the uh, Office of Education urges us to, to make reliable devices of the same class as of the one that we now use, while, however, uh, we are interested as well to develop more able devices. Regardless of what may lie ahead for the Opticon, the current version of this remarkable device already represents the first major advance in sensory aids to reading in over 150 years. It cannot and will not replace the aids which have traditionally been available to the blind, but to many who are denied the sense of sight. Opticon opens a new horizon of independent access to a world of printed information.